Very early iframe, so that's gonna be a big setback there, but MVP is not the one we're worried about. They're just a setback here for TSM! Who is going to do it? TSM! You're your champion! It took them a while to get to match point. But in the end, they win back-to-back -back Apex Legends tournaments. Your X Games winners, and your winners of the Apex Legends preseason invitational. The Preseason Invitational was the first and only official LAN event for competitive Apex Legends. The tournament took place back on September of 2019, 8 months after the game was first released. And at that time, a lot of people were skeptical about the future of competitive Apex Legends. To some people, Apex was just another AAA game riding the Battle Royale hype. And also around that time, Fortnite was dominating the gaming scene. The game had 75 million active players in 2019, and also it was number 2 for the the most watched game on Twitch with over 1 billion hours of watch time, and the competitive side of Fortnite was doing extremely well. In July of 2019, Fortnite held its first World Cup, a very huge tournament for competitive Fortnite players that went through a qualification process in order to compete at an in-person event. The tournament had a prize pool of $30 million. No matter if you were a gamer or not, you most likely heard about this tournament. Everyone on social media was talking about it, including mainstream media, and for once it felt like esports was getting the attention that it deserved. Booga, a player for Sentinels, won the Fortnite Solo World Cup, earning him $3 million, life-changing money, especially for a 16 year old but ladies and gentlemen there's no way anyone beats him your fortnite world champion Booga! this proved to many people that there is money to make in esports and that the idea that playing video games is a waste of time was outdated Fortnite set the bar very high, not only for battle royale games, but for every video game that had a competitive scene. So when Apex Legends came out, the competitive scene had to be perfect. And due to the insanely fast growth of Apex Legends, many huge esports organizations jumped in early on to get a head start in the esports scene. Organizations such as NRG, TSM, Rogue, and much more came into Apex early on, showing that there was potential in the competitive side of Apex Legends. Fast forward to September of 2019. Apex Legends hosted their first ever in-person tournament, the Preseason Invitational, a tournament which had highly skilled players from different parts of the world all competing for a prize pool of $500,000. And moments like this are what motivates people to try and get into esports. With a lot of practice and experience, you could make a career from playing video games competitively, something many of you guys already do on a daily basis. But behind all the sunshines and rainbows in the esports industry, there are many organizations that exploit your passion in order to pocket some of your hard-earned money. And to the unexpecting person, they might not realize it until it's too late. Let's take a deeper look into the shady side of the esports industry. So just like any other industry, if you are going to work with an organization, you need to sign a contract. And usually in esports, the contracts would outline important factors such as your salary, the percentage the organization will take from your potential tournament winnings, and much more. Usually, the percentage they take is around 0 to 20% from tournament winnings. But in some cases, the organization would allegedly take an insane percentage of their player's tournament earnings, causing conflict between the player and the organization. And we've seen this happen back in May 20th of 2019, when Tifu filed a lawsuit against FaZe Clan. The lawsuit claimed that FaZe Clan was limiting Tifu's ability to pursue his profession, which is in violation of California law. Also, the contract FaZe Clan made Tifu sign was grossly oppressive, onerous, and one-sided, as stated in the lawsuit. The contract allegedly entitled FaZe Clan to a finder's fee of up to 80% of Tifu's hard-earned revenue, and according to the lawsuit, FaZe Clan had the power to stop Tifu from taking any sponsorships that they did not provide. And following the news of the lawsuit, FaZe Clan released an official statement calling the accusations false, and they confirmed that they were entitled to a maximum of 20% of Tifu's tournament winnings and content revenue, but they chose not to take any of it. According to FaZe Clan, the 80-20 to 20 ratio was in favor of Tifu and not the other way around. 
Fast forward to August 26th of 2020, after a 15 month contract dispute over sponsorship opportunities and payments, Tifu and FaZe Clan announced that they had resolved their disputes and settled their litigations. And this incident was a huge reminder to everyone of the risk of signing a bad contract. You should always have an experienced person such as a lawyer look at the contract before you sign it. Because if you were to sign a bad contract, that one mistake could cost you a lot of money and is extremely stressful to get out of. But that example is quite rare. And not directly related to Apex Legends, but it is relevant to every professional player and content creator no matter which video game you are playing. On Apex Legends, there were multiple organizations that had been seen as legit, and they had signed some of the best professional players in the game, but eventually they ran into a problem, which led to the downfall of their organization. And Solafide is a very good example of this. Solafide was an esports organization that was involved in the Apex and League of Legends competitive scene. The organization had signed some of the best professional players on Apex, such as Zach Mazur, Resulta, Designful, and Gentrifying. And in the eyes of everyone that watched competitive Apex, Solafide was your everyday esports organization. They had very good placements in tournaments and had earned over $80,000 in tournament winnings. On paper, they were the definition of a good organization. They had their staff team and professional players signed to a contract, meaning their active rosters and staff team were being paid a salary every month. And and up to this point, everything seemed to be going well, but unfortunately, it wouldn't be like that for long. During the beginning of 2021, the Solafide higher-ups signed 5 players, along with coaching and management staff to contracts. They would start working in the beginning of 2021 and end in November of 2021, but for some reason on February 1st, nobody got paid their salary. This caused the team working at the League of Legends Championship Series, also known as the LCS, to release a statement saying that the members of Solafide were supposed to be paid on the first of every month, and after the members were not paid on February 1st, concern arose, and Oddity, who was the CEO of Solafide, said the team and players over at Solafide were not paid due to a banking issue, which at the time seemed like a suspicious but reasonable excuse. But during the next month, the same problem happened again. On March 1st, Solafide members were not paid their salary. This time, people desperately needed to get paid due to not receiving their salary the month prior. Some of the Solafide members requested that Oddity should pay two of the members that desperately needed the money. Unfortunately, Oddity did not pay anyone, including the two people that desperately needed the money. And this caused the LCS to ban Oddity and Solafide from the LCS until they had proof that Solafide was in new ownership. This this caused Oddity to release a statement as to why Solafide could not pay any of their members on both League of Legends and Apex Legends. Oddity claimed that COVID affected them and that the inability to transfer funds internationally had caused them to be unable to pay out their contracts in an untimely fashion. But behind this act that Oddity was putting out, people discovered that the Solafide company status has been inactive, meaning the company still exists in the eyes of the law, but it has no activity taking place. And that was sketchy because Solafide was involved in activities even though their company status was inactive. Oddity or any of the people at Solafide failed to mention this to the public. And to make it worse, the Solafide company was dissolved, meaning that the Solafide company did not exist as a legal entity. During this entire incident, contracted players and staff members for both Apex Legends and League of Legends were doing hard work but in return they were not being paid, basically meaning they were scammed. As of right now, Oddity is inactive on all of his social media accounts and none of the signed Solafide members have been paid. And you would think that people would learn from the mistakes that Solafide made, right? Well, unfortunately, that is not the case. On February 7th of 2021, the partnership manager for Noble Esports announced that he is no longer contracted with Noble Esports. The statement that he posted was a typical goodbye announcement. He thanked everyone he worked with throughout his time in Noble Esports, but near the end of his announcement, he mentioned the name Kyle McDougal the owner of Noble Esports. This ball called out Kyle McDougal for being the reason why anyone on Noble would leave the organization. He claimed that McDougal was difficult to work with and he was disrespectful to staff members. And he claimed that McDougal failed to pay the players, staff, and T-Pain 
who was working with them on a special event. And according to Disbog, who is the partnership manager, the reason why McDougal missed payments is because McDougal wanted to focus on a new cryptocurrency called Nobility Token, a crypto venture that is tied to Noble Esports. After Disbog announced that he is no longer a part of Noble Esports, this inspired a lot of other Noble Esports members to share the fact that they have not been paid. Alice, who was the content director for Noble Esports, announced that she was missing a month of salary, and all of her work samples due to the Twitter account showcasing her work being deactivated was lost. And this caused a lot of staff members to disassociate with Noble, including the CEO and the CMO, and also the talent manager of Noble Esports. And after a lot of criticism, the Noble Esports Twitter page was activated once again. Kyle McDougal released a statement on the Twitter account claiming that the lack of payments was caused by a change in payment methods. He claimed that a lot of the company money was being wasted on PayPal fees, tens of thousands of dollars over the course of a year. And because of this, they switched to using their company bank account. And in the first attempt of switching accounts, the company bank account was locked and closed because it was being used for cryptocurrency, according to what Cal McDougal said. And the bank told them they were not able to continue doing business with them. McDougal claimed that some of the payments were being sent and others were not, forcing him to manually push payments through, leading to individuals being lost in the process. And this incident caused many people to criticize McDougal for how he runs his company. Also, this incident caused Nobility Token to take a hit, and the Nobility Token team claimed that Nobility is a separately owned company, basically disassociating themselves from Noble Esports because of all the drama. And pretty much at this point, Noble Esports came to an end. While researching for this video, I noticed that many upcoming professional players tried to get signed into an organization really fast. And while there is some pros for being a part of an esports organization, there is many cons. Many startups in the esports industries fell, and when that that happens, you are going to be thrown under the bus, as we've seen happen to sign players in Solofide, Noble, and Aqualix. So be cautious on who you sign with.